on this edition of The Self-Publishing Show. And slowly, after the first release, I learned about PR companies and book bloggers and reviews. And I was like, wow, this is a whole world because if you're not in the indie community, you don't actually realize it's there. Publishing is changing. No more gatekeepers, no more barriers, no one standing between you and your readers. Do you want to make a living from your writing? Join indie bestseller Mark Dawson and first-time author James Blatch as they shine a light on the secrets of self-publishing success. This is The Self-Publishing Show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Hello and welcome to The Self-Publishing Show with me, James Blatch. And me, Mark Dawson. Not in, in my your, office today. Not in your office, in your home office, which is where yes. everyone is now. The new, uh, yes. the new normal. Welcome to our world. We, we've been home officing for years. We don't need well, a disease to work into that. That's work very home. true. That's very true. Yes. No, I've been there. I've been here for, actually, I've been in the office quite a lot um, since lockdown eased, but it's quite nice to be home today. Yes. Uh, you have an office in town, of course. Um, I was thinking these, um, these WeWork and Regis in the UK, uh, these companies are probably a good investment area because people will eventually... They'll, they'll scale down the big offices in London. There's no question, I think, about that. They'll still want them there, but there'll be a lot more working from home. And people will very quickly... I've had two friends, in fact, one yesterday, come around to look at this garden office because they're very quickly working out that, particularly if you're in a smallish house, it's difficult to work all day at home. Um, you need a bit of space to yourself. So I think uh, investment opportunities there, the garden office company, Regis and WeWork. WeWork's never made any money, but it might. I mean, it's got a slightly eccentric. I don't know if you ever look at this guy, a slightly eccentric owner. I, I do know about him, yes. Yeah, he uh, got into quite a lot of trouble, didn't he? And his wife's yeah. a little bit odd, odd as well. But he might have fallen on his feet suddenly because of COVID, but there we go. <laughs> um, okay, look, let me welcome a couple of Patreon supporters. I'm going to say Patreon from now on, I think, if I can remember to do that rather than Patreon. Uh, and we are going to say a very warm welcome to Joshua McManus from Cambridge. In fact, I think he's just down the road from me, Joshua. Welcome to being a Patreon supporter of the self-publishing show. And also to Melissa Service from California in the United States of America. Uh, thank you very much. You can go to patreon.com forward slash self-publishing show uh, to support the show and you get a load of goodies. It's all, all there on the page, but you get everything first. And a few goodies thrown in. Uh, we mentioned our 101 course. It opens next Wednesday. You can go to selfpublishingformula.com forward slash 101 from Wednesday, 10 o'clock p.m. UK time. So that's, um, when is that? In the afternoon in New York, something like Don't that. Five o'clock in the, something like five o'clock in the afternoon in New York, a little bit earlier in the West Coast. And the next morning in Australia, because in the future. Um, and uh, we're looking forward to opening the gates for 101, welcoming on a clutch of new enthusiastic students um, who can join me in being a first-time author. Well, never, get them, never get told that. Many of them will be first-time authors before you, I suspect. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I'm doing well on my second book. You'll be pleased to know. So I've now got two <laughs> unpublished books. Excellent. Very good. <laughs> Sure, I'm enjoying. Redneck is going well. Um, good. Okay, what else are we going to say? We're going to say we have a little bit of a podcast self-publishing show announcement today. Do we not, Mark? We do, yes. So uh, we, as we record this on Monday before the Friday, um, we are at 1,996,000 downloads. So uh, by the time this goes out, we will have gone through 2 million downloads, which is is an achievement, I think. It's a, it's, it's a milestone to celebrate. So uh, yeah, to, it uh, is. thanks to everyone who has downloaded. Um, how many episodes have we done now? What is it? 300 and 237? No, 240, I think. 240. Something, 244 maybe this might be. Mm. Yeah, so thanks to everyone who's, who's downloaded and listened to those. Some, of the, some people have listened to all of them. So pity those poor people who listened to us faffing around at the start when we didn't know what we were doing trying to interview people between mm. the two of us, which was a disaster. Yes. It wasn't a um, disaster, but it was, no, not, no, was it, optimal. It was, a, it was, it was suboptimal. <laughs> it was a disaster. So, no, thanks thanks to everyone who's been um, been around. Um, and, and also to, to new um, listeners who are kind of start, some people will start from the start, some people will just pick up the, the latest ones. So um, we appreciate every single one of our listeners. It's, um, it's lovely to do this for you. We really do. And uh, yeah, 2 million downloads, I think, is, is a good achievement. Of course, it could be 10 people who've downloaded it 
200,000 times I each. I don't think it works like that, but no, I suppose right. technically it's possible, but yeah. <laughs> um, we have loyal, loyal fans who listen to every word and lots of other people who dip in and out. And I know from occasionally when we've said something or had a guest um, that gets a little spike interest that there's a wider community because you hear some of the Twitterati talking and quoting us. So I do know, I think we've seeped into the indie consciousness as part of the furniture, I guess is, uh, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, um, so we've done 101, we've done our Patreons, we've wo- we've welcomed our two millionth download with a sort of red tape cutting. Um, anything else to report this week? Should we mention there's been some chatter in our groups and other groups about some Amazon links shenanigans with Facebook? We haven't really got to the bottom of it, but there's a kind of don't panic from you, we I think, coming out of this. We mentioned it last week, didn't we? So um, we, we, and nothing really much has happened since then. So just very, very briefly to reiterate the message from last week was there's some concern that Facebook is no longer allowing um, uh, links and ads to Amazon, which, again, we made no sense when, when we heard about this. The <laughs> the latest, I still don't think this is, this is true, but the latest I heard was that someone claimed um, Amazon.co.uk in their business manager, which meant that no one else could could use it. Um, oh, that, hilarious. That, that, that can't be true. Um, I just can't be true. And, and also, just remember, of course, that authors are not the only people sending Facebook traffic to Amazon. Um, yes. Everyone selling things is selling traffic to Amazon. So um, I, I don't think that's true. I, I have heard some, um, I've seen some responses from Facebook support, obviously all contradictory, but I've seen some, you know, acknowledging that this is an issue, a known issue, it's being dealt with. And I've seen in the community, um, ads are being switched on again. My ads to the UK went off on Saturday, they all got shut down. Um, I re I re enabled them on Sunday, and they're all running. So I think it might have passed. Um, but it has been really bumpy with Facebook uh, over the last yeah. two to three weeks. I think it I think it will be bumpy all the way through November now um, until uh, the US election is out of the way. I think it's going to be quite a, a bumpy time for, um, for for that platform in particular. What about the Not, six months of legal wrangling after the election? Well, I think well, after that point, it was probably, I don't think anyone will be, will be concerned about Russians um, using Facebook ads to influence one no. way or the other. Um, so, yeah, there'll be some dust to settle, but hopefully things will calm down by then. And, and uh, from my perspective at the moment, it seems OK. Um, but don't be don't be surprised if there are other issues uh, as we push on and, and, and just check into the check into the SPF community for reports of issues. And also, if, if you're if you're finding something, it's always worth doing a quick search um, because there were maybe, I don't know, half a dozen new threads started by people who hadn't done that and, and missed out on quite long threads explaining what had happened and what we thought the reasons were. So it's always worth doing a quick search. But um, I understand yeah. people are posting because it is con- it's quite concerning, especially when several authors w- were saying that basically my business relies on Facebook ads and suddenly mm-hmm. I can't advertise. So fairly, you know, s- significant and concerning for people like that. Um, but you know, that stuff, we'd always post it in the group. So it's definitely the first place to look. Yeah, definitely worth being there. Our Facebook groups, search self-publishing formula on Facebook. Um, yeah, and for the record, Fuse uh, campaigns have never been affected by this. I'm running um, to Amazon on both .co.uk and .com using genie.is. You links, whether that makes a difference. I don't know, but um, yeah, they've not been. But Tom Ashford came a cropper, our very own Tom, who's now selling his own books and doing very well with them. Um, yes, he, he had a little temper tantrum, didn't he? He said, well, this is not on when he got yes, shut down. He did. Yes, he did. Yeah. Bless him. Okay. Now, somebody who knows all about this world has sold a shed load of books. Has done really well. Is our interviewee today. Her name is Danny Rene. She sells the type of books I guess you probably just slip into at the weekend, Mark. They're sort of male BDSM spicy romance. While She Sleeps is one of them. A Cut So Deep is, I love her titles. The Devil's Plaything. I think that's... Oh, semi- you're, turning, you're really turning into Partridge now. Semi-biographical <laughs> about the Dawson. Uh, lots of naked torsos on show. Now, Danny is actually in South Africa in lovely Cape Town. And a lot of this interview is a bit about not being in America, not being in the UK, which are the two, as I think I said in the interview, the two kind of big spike uh, places for sales on Amazon, certainly at the moment, although that, that is changing 
And when you're not in those two territories, which get a lot of the things first, they get a lot of the front end first, they get a lot of bells and whistles. When you're outside of that zone, life can be slightly more complicated, particularly in South Africa, as Danny explained. So some good tips about if you're not in America and UK, how to continue and make the most of your marketing to those big territories. Uh, And also just a bit about being Danny Renee, being a successful writer, a young woman who's done really well, very excited for her. So let's hear from Danny. This is the self publishing show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Danny Renee, welcome to the self publishing show from beautiful Cape Town. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Um, in fact, the odd thing is, despite the fact you're, I don't know how far, eight, 10,000 miles away, we're about in the same yeah. time zone, aren't we? Because we run down north south. Yeah, we're about an hour's difference at the moment, I think it is, because it's midday year now. So There you go, yeah, 11 o'clock in the morning. So that makes a difference for me. It's usually dark outside and it's sunny wherever <laughs> I'm talking to somebody, but here we go. Um, good. So, Danny, we're going to talk a bit about you. I think we'll talk a bit about being in South Africa, and this will probably be uh, apposite for people in Canada and Australia and New Zealand and places that aren't the US, basically, yeah. uh, and the UK. And the UK and the US are big spike markets for ebook yeah. sales in particular. Uh, so yeah. when you operate outside of those markets, obviously you're feeding into them, but uh, we'll talk a bit yeah. about what it's like from there. But why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and when you got going with writing? Um, okay, so I started writing when I was still in sort of uh, I was, we, we call it primary school. Um, so I was probably about 12 or 13. Um, and I started writing really short stories, um, in like little notebooks that I, that I kept. And, um, and I started writing, um, paranormal actually, cause I sort of always read paranormal. So I thought, well, I can try this out. And, um, and I found it quite fun cause it was, it was almost an outlet, but I've always had, uh, a creative mindset. I wasn't very sort of academic. I didn't enjoy school very much. I liked the art side of things. Um, and then um, and then I wrote until I was about at college. And then after college, before I sort of started working, because uh, I studied art. So once again, the creative side, um, I went over to the UK. I spent a couple of years working, traveling around and doing the sort of gap year, I guess. Um, and then it was only when I got back home and I started working again and I had the time on my hands where in the evenings I'd sort of sit down and jot notes out and things like that. Um, and I never sort of thought, oh, one day I'm going to be an author. Um, It was because I was doing graphic design at the time and I do love graphic design. Um, But then I thought, you know what, writing's always been that thing that I used to go to when, you know, I I just needed an outlet. So a friend of mine actually told me, well, why don't you uh, write and then put it up on Wattpad because it's free Um, and you can sort of see if people engage with you and things like that so that's where I sort of started actually putting my work out there for other people to read um and yeah I wrote on Wattpad for about a year and a half before I actually published so all that writing you did before that point was just for you it was just your own oh yeah yeah I didn't uh, I sort of hid that away that was like my stories um I think also it was just that fear of saying yes a story I wrote read it you know yeah yeah, yeah, of course, especially when you're younger and perhaps, yeah. um, and if you're not academic, and I wasn't at school actually either, it can affect your confidence, Yeah, um, which is silly. Our, our school systems are so geared around being academic, and uh, yes. most people aren't yeah. actually, and most people contribute yeah. to life in different ways, but there you go. That's a different yeah. conversation. Um, okay, <laughs> so you went up to Wattpad, and I'm assuming you got a good reception? did yeah i started doing fan fiction then um and i figured well let me try this out see how it goes wrote i think i put up maybe three stories and um a few of the of sort of friends that i made through there uh, said to me they were the actually the ones who said to me well why don't you self-publish and i said what how do you do that because um obviously growing up the books I bought were all traditionally published you know it was like penguin books and those kinds of things so I thought so I thought said to them okay well let me 
let me research this because this sounds interesting, you know. Um, and that started almost a six month long journey of researching because in South Africa, um, you know, we can't use our banking details on Amazon. So it was just finding all these ways of actually doing it, but making sure that you do it all properly instead of just taking a chance and, and that kind of thing. So, uh, yes. Yeah, oh. so so when was this, Danny? What year was this where you were uh, researching? 2015. 2015, so okay. 2015, yeah. So okay. from about January through to about June, I just spent time online, like researching, trying to read up as much as I could about self-publishing because I'd never heard of it before that. And did you find there were quite a few areas that were specific to you because you're in South Africa that were different from what you were reading, people's experiences perhaps in the U.S.? Yeah, there was. Um, the main thing, obviously, was finding an editor uh, because, funny enough, obviously, growing up, uh, we I grew up writing and learning uh, how to do it in British English. And when I started writing, I started writing American English. So finding the editor would understand, like, actually help me hone that skill. Um, and then obviously being in South Africa, Amazon doesn't pay us directly via bank deposits. So I had to figure out how to get paid via Amazon because uh, it was either, uh, the option was a check that they post to you. And wow. I thought, oh, I don't trust our postal system, uh. <laughs> you know, um, because, um, you know, we've just, we've always just heard like, oh, this parcel goes missing or that parcel goes missing. And I thought, I don't really want to take that chance. And then I found out about Payoneer, which was available to South Africans, um, which gave us a sort of uh, US bank account as such, so we can still get paid and then withdraw the money into our bank accounts locally. So it was a bit of a roundabout way, but yeah. So I hadn't realized that. I hadn't realized that that mm. was a uh, a thing that uh, yeah. Amazon doesn't pay into uh, South African bank accounts. Is that yeah. still the case? It is still the case, yeah. So basically, what we have to do is we go through Payoneer and Payoneer sets up a account for us to use uh, on Amazon. And then from there, we can link our South African bank account. So we okay. can then withdraw the money in. Yeah. And how does that work with tax? Because in the UK, we get the tax exemption. Do you get that yeah. still? We do get a US tax exemption. So basically, once I withdraw my money from Payoneer into my bank account locally, I can then, I then get the tax and I work it out because we've got um, we we have sort of a self-employed tax a service where we make sure that we get all the forms that Amazon sends us at the end of the tax year, and then we go into the tax um, website and upload everything, and then declare our income and all of that. So it's quite a mission. Yeah. I'm not a I hate doing taxes, but yes. um, yeah. So at least we only we can either do it twice a year or we have to do it annually. So it's up to us how we do that. And in terms of otherwise creating your KDP yeah. accounts and so yeah. on, all of that is the same as it would be for me in the UK, creating a dot com account and uh, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, okay. everything's everything is exactly the same. It's just the banking side. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you got into this self publishing world. Now what how how did you plan your your kind of release strategy and your writing during this period that you were researching the business side of it? Well, it was quite funny because I had, uh, I, I read up on pre-orders and I put the book up on pre-order, you know, thinking, okay, that's it. That's what you do. And I have to say, whenever I do any sort of teaching or someone asks me advice, I say, please don't do what I did. Because I put the book up there and just went, okay, it's on Amazon now, you know, because I didn't know anything about marketing. Because when I've been researching, it was more the KDP side and how to actually get the book up there. But the marketing was uh, non-existent to me at that point. And, um, and slowly uh, after the first release, I learned about PR companies and book bloggers and reviews. And I was like, oh, this is a whole world because if you're not in the indie community, you don't actually realize it's there. So you had a cover and so on, presumably. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I had the cover. I had formatted um, the document as per the guidelines on Amazon and I uploaded it and it sort of sat there and had maybe 10 sales. Okay. So it wasn't <laughs> very visible, but you had you, had you yeah. had the book edited? 
Yes, yeah. I okay. found an editor that. So yeah. it was all, all, as far yeah. as you were concerned, the book was okay. It's just you didn't really yeah. know what you were doing in terms of getting <laughs> visibility, which yeah. is not an uncommon story. And yeah. you're here talking to us today, but there are plenty of people who never moved beyond that, probably, and had good books that just sit there yeah. lang- languishing. But there yeah. you go. That's the difference, isn't it? Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, at some point then, you decided <laughs> to uh, to get involved in this mysterious art of uh, of marketing, and what what yes. did you do then that made a difference? Um, the first thing that I actually found was finding a good PR company. So um, because I then found out through a blogger who found my book, or I posted it on Insta. I posted a live now image on Instagram saying my book's live, and a book blogger had randomly found me, and um, and she's introduced herself said I'm a book blogger um I'd like to review your book and I was like oh okay um and then I started googling book bloggers uh, reviews and that kind of thing and that's when I found there's all these PR companies who run blog tours and and that kind of thing and that's when I contacted um Enticing Journey and I said hi I've literally just released a book I don't know what I'm doing please help and they've been sort of with me throughout my my entire five years now and um and they sort of gave me the advice of um we're going to try and get as many reviews up and they gave me advice and then um and then i hit facebook because then they said do you have your facebook page and i said i have a page but i have like maybe 10 likes i don't know and and that's where i found um other authors who were indie authors and and 90 percent of them were u.s based i didn't find any sort of local south african indie authors and i started networking i i thought you know what if i'm going to make this happen i need to get my name out there somehow um and yeah i networked with a lot of authors who were new to me and they gave me advice and explained about marketing and promotions on social media and making sure my website set up and that kind of thing. So, yeah, it was a it was definitely a learning curve um, because obviously coming from a more corporate side where I was working as a graphic designer all the years. I mean, I learned marketing as a company, but for myself, I had no clue. So, yeah, so it took some time. But within that first year, um, I I came from like having 10 sales to like actually being able to market a book and release. Okay. And how did the sales follow? Um, It actually, as I started marketing, I could actually see an uptick. I didn't, at that point, I didn't run any ads or anything because I didn't really know about it. But um, from just being a being online and and shouting about oh my book's live my book's live you know and sharing it and um, with authors other authors help um, I managed to find some readers who then uh, some of them are still with me now as my street team who promote my books so um, it was it was definitely one of those things where you sort of need to dive in at the deep end and just not be scared to tell people your books out there. Um, so yeah, so I started, um, I, I did definitely, uh, with my next release, I made sure that I had a blog tour and some bloggers signed up for it. Um, and then I started promoting on Facebook and Instagram. Those were my two sort of main social media channels. And a lot, I mean, blog tours and PR companies, are uh, certainly in the UK and the US, I think you hear they're less relevant than they used to be. But clear, it seems to me like it was quite a key part of your success. It was at that time. I, um, this was uh, sort of early 2016 because I published the first book I published was December 2015. So 2016, um, I found that the blog tours introduced me to bloggers who didn't know who I was and they took a chance because obviously they're getting an ARC file They're not sort of spending money on a book that they might not know. And I found that a lot of the bloggers since then have continued to sign up for my book. So um, I think with blog tours, it just depends on the company you use, because I still see them um, as a very helpful tool to use when, especially if you're a new author or if you're just trying to get more visibility on your book. Yeah, at that that very early stage. And the PR companies say are still with you. So what have they done for you? 
Um, well, they've actually helped grow my reader base. And I quite like the fact that um, the admin side of running a blog tour, because it's a lot of work, because you have to contact all the bloggers, you have to send out the arcs, you have to do all of that. And they handle that. And then what they do is they'll send me the review links as they come in and they'll send me like who signed up, who's reviewing, who's not reviewing, who's sharing the cover and that kind of thing. So they do the admin side, which is nice because uh, for me personally, like I just want to sit and write the book, but, yeah. um, but also like that side of things, it's nice to have a relationship with people like that because they can then offer advice and, and with them, they have really grown my following in okay. a way because obviously bloggers have found me and readers have found me. So it's good. And the, the bottom line here is, well, actually, one more question on that is, do you, yeah. you pay a retainer to them a month or is it a, is it a percentage? Um, no, I just basically what I do is when I have a release dates and cover reveal date set, then I just contact them and say, can you set up a blog tour for me for these dates? This is the blurb of the book and they'll set, set up the sign up form and things like that. Okay. So I pay per release. Okay. Um, I know some, I know some authors do have a PR company that they pay monthly. Yeah. Um, but yeah. The old retainer. Okay. Yeah. Um, so where are you today? I mean, I can see it at Amazon. Uh, there's some, <laughs> some, some great reviews. There's some pretty good, uh, placements in, in the charts. What can you give us an yeah. idea of, uh, of where you are today in terms of sales? Uh, so, uh, yeah, there, uh, look, if I compare the 2016 and 2020, um, there's a massive difference. And the spike happened um, last year, I would say. Um, I sort of saw my sales growing gradually. And then last year, I sort of started writing sort of darker romance and the grittier stories. And I found, I think that's my sort of niche. Um, and I quite enjoy it. And the readers have followed me on. And last year, especially, the, I just had the spike happen. And the, I, I would say that comes from writing a series. Um, because I feel that once you have a really good series, readers will then find that they'll buy each of the books because they're invested. And then they'll like buy your other books. Um, so yeah, cause I started off with standalones thinking, oh yeah, just one book, that's fine. Um, but as I sort of started doing research and looking at other authors, I noticed that series really does, it sort of brings your readers to you. So yeah. So then, um, last year with, uh, I sort of did a seven book series and it was sort of based around one like circle of friends. And I think that's where I actually got most of my readers from. So yeah, the sales have definitely gone up. <laughs> yeah. Can you give us a rough idea that don't have to give us specific figures of, of where you are? Um, so as, uh, last year I was sort of still four figures per month. This year was my first five figures um, Brilliant. Uh, monthly. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> and is that the Twisted Steel series that you did last year? um no it's actually uh sins of seven okay um, so they're sort of black covers with gemstones and and things on dark romance so you better cl <laughs> you better clue me in on what dark romance <laughs> is okay <laughs> okay so that particular series is actually sort of bdsm uh romantic suspense and that kind of thing but there's a whole sort of genre that's that we call dark romance where you sort of write uh, more, I suppose, grittier stories. So like your mafia, your mo motorcycle club romances, okay. things like that. Um, uh, there's a, there's quite a few authors to sort of uh, touch on, um, you know, uh, the trafficking that happens and, and readers do, I think for them to actually, they know it's, it's sort of coming from real life almost, but just reading it and seeing how uh, your female character heals from a terrible past or something. I think okay. it, it sort of gives them hope that they And are the, the male leads, are they the bad boys or is it the cop or is um, it change? It depends. It, it generally, it's normally uh, the, 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 the guy who saves her. Okay. Um, and and there are some stories where it is the bad guy, but then you sort of seem 
redeem himself because he realizes this is not good or whatever. So, so yeah, they like seeing the bad boy get redeemed. Of course, and everybody <laughs> lived happily ever after, which is uh, yeah. <laughs> what we read romances for. Okay, yeah. well, let's talk a little bit about your writing process then, uh, Danny. Congratulations, okay. by the way, on your success. That's fantastic. And Thank I think you're you. quite right to really focus on on series there. Commercially, it can make all the difference. Yeah. Um, so you you published how many books last year? Oh, good question. I think it was 10, if okay. I'm not mistaken. <laughs> I think so. So nearly a book a month. Uh, you write every day, I assume? I do, yeah. Uh, last last year, March, I actually quit my job. Um, I was able to quit my job right. with, with my income. Um, and yeah, now I write every day. Uh, basically, I'm not very, I'm not a plotter at all. I am very much. I sit down at my computer and start writing. Um, but I do. I everybody always asks me how I'm able to do it, but I do tend to jump around manuscripts. So I'll sort of start working on one, and I might get an idea for the other story, and I quickly jump to that one and write the the scene down. So. Um, I tend to do that quite a lot. And I suppose that's how I can write a lot of books sort of in that time span. Um, but yeah, my, my process is pretty much um, in the mornings, I try and get through emails and do admin. And then I spend the day all the way to about five in the evening, just writing. And do you have a word count target for yourself? Um, it depends on deadlines. Um, if I've got a specific deadline or if there's a release that's planned for a specific date, then I try and get about 5,000 words a day. Um, and then there are days where I sort of, where I feel a story is just flowing and I can easily get up to 10,000 words a day. Wow. Um, yeah. And I haven't got more than that though. <laughs> that is, that's amazing. And are you writing on a, a keyboard in Scrivener or are you dictating or? Um, I, I write on my laptop and I generally use Word, um, but I do use a Scrivener sometimes every now and again. I sort of feel like a change of scenery. Yes. <laughs> so I'll open that up. But um, yeah, generally just Word on my laptop. <laughs> Keep it fresh. Now, your, yeah. your, um, your covers are, are very striking. Do you source them Thanks. in South Africa? Have you got people online doing them for you elsewhere? Um, most of my covers I do myself. Oh, you do? Um, okay. Yeah. So wow. I'm a graphic designer. So yes, I... you said that. I missed that <laughs> bit. Yeah. No, no, it's fine. Um, so most of the covers I do myself. Uh, I have worked with a cover designer who's actually in the UK. Um, she is actually an artist, a fine artist, and I find some of her covers are quite striking with the, the, the way she paints on them. So I have got a few covers from her. Um, but yeah, I generally do them myself because I know my deadline. And if I want the cover done now, then I can do it now. So yeah. And again, it's another yeah. change of scenery, isn't it? I get the feeling you're yeah, somebody exactly. who likes to have a little break from one thing yes. and move on to another. That's the way yeah. that, that, I think that works for me as well. Um, nice. And what about outside of eBooks and print on demand? Uh, first of all, I can, I think you're probably, uh, exclusive. Are you not looking at this? Are you in the KU? I, uh, some of my books are, and then there are some that are wide. Ah, okay. So you do do some wide and audio books. Yeah. I have got a sort of handful of audio books. I've got three with, uh, Tanta. Mm -hmm. uh, Tanta Audio. And then um, I've got, I'm actually currently uh, looking for narrators for another one, but I've done for myself. So uh, through Find Away Voices, because once again, in South Africa, we can't use Audible directly right. um, or ACX. Um, so I go through Find Away Voices and they sort of distribute to everyone. Um, so yeah, so I've I've done a few myself and then um, obviously Tanta signed uh, three of them from me as well. So, yeah. And in terms of find a way and the different ways of doing, we've just, we've actually mm. just done a deal with Tantor as well for the, the books and our imprint. Okay. Uh, but I was just researching going, doing them myself and um, yeah, not myself, but you know, organizing it myself. <laughs> yeah. And I was looking at find a ways model of basically using them as the production 
yeah. organization, you know, select the, the voice, and then you end up with the completed units, which are yours to distribute as you wish at that point. So you could, yes. you could then yeah. go with uh, Audible or whatever. Um, yeah. Was that what you were looking at before? Is that what you, sorry, is that what you did with Findaway or did you do the deal where they also do the distribution? Um, I actually just had them do everything. So um, I uploaded the files and then found the narrator that I wanted to use. And then um, there was obviously the option of here's all your files. And I just thought, well, it's going to just be easier have them do it because then they know where to put them and yeah, that okay. kind of thing. Because uh, as as a South African, I can't actually go onto ACX, uh, create an account and upload my files. Um, so I thought, let them do it directly to Amazon. And then I figured, well, if they're going to do it through to, to ACX, then I may as well just do all the other um, channels. So they've done it all for me. And it's it's really been an easy process. I'm happy with the way they work and everything. So it's quite frustrating, some of this, isn't it, being in, in South Africa? And I, I, don't know how, I don't know how similar this is to, uh, to other countries outside the UK, US, but um, it must be a bit annoying. Do you, oh, what about virtual private networks, these VPNs? You can sort of set yourself up pretending you're in another country. Is that something you've looked into? Um, I was looking into it, but I thought it's just because obviously um, on the tax forms and things like that, I need to put in my South African tax number sure. and all of that. So I figured may as well just I I sort of I got used to finding roundabout ways like yeah. using find a way and that kind of thing. So I know there are um, a few local authors sort of popping up now that um, I've sort of helped and everything and um, and hopefully like just offering the advice that are like the mistakes I found or the, the, the issues I found sort of helps them. But yeah, I, for me personally, like I quite like having find a way as the almost the third party. Cause then I, if I want to remove a book, I can just go onto yeah. one uh, store storefront and go, okay, remove it from here. Whereas if you sort of go any, anywhere else, it's like, oh, I have to go to this one separately then that one. And, um, and it's the same with Barnes and Noble because we can't publish directly to Barnes and Noble, so I use Draft to Digital. Yes, uh, very... um, and they then do the libraries like Scribe and all of that for me as well. So, so I guess in, <laughs> in your situation, those aggregators like D to D and um, uh, and find a way really yeah. come into their own, make it open up yes. the market to you. Good. Yeah. And in terms of sales for audiobooks, is it is it an <laughs> important part of your income stream or? Um, not, not really. I, I suppose also it's just, um, my, I haven't marketed them as much as I do my audio, uh, my eBooks. Um, I would say comparatively 90% of my sales are eBook. Uh, I then possibly have 5% between paperback and audio. I know audio is quite big. I see a lot of romance readers or listeners now, um, enjoy audio. So, I think once the series is actually completed into audio, I, I might just mark it properly. But yeah, I've been terrible at marketing my audio books. <laughs> yeah, it's a different type of marketing as well. And let's, yeah. let's just finish with, with marketing. So what are you doing at the moment in terms of, uh, of ads and, and, and marketing? Um, I'm currently running, I work on Facebook ads and then I run BookBub ads as well. Um, I found them both uh, very beneficial for me uh, or for my genre. Um, I have tested out AMS ads or Amazon ads, but um, I, I don't like, I, I have to like actually sit down and look at it because I find that that's more difficult to me uh, or I found them more expensive than, than Facebook and BookBub. So I don't know, but I did sign up for the um, course uh, as yeah. for author's course. So I'm busy going through those now because uh, I would like to obviously advertise on Amazon. Um, but yeah, so also it's quite difficult uh, romance wise because a lot of my covers used to have couples on and Amazon doesn't like when you have couples on a cover and that kind of thing. So I've just had to try and also rebrand so that I can advertise on this site. I can see a lot of uh, naked male torsos. <laughs> When I glance yeah. down your, your <laughs> list, but that's okay. You can have those. Um, but uh, yes, you say you do sort of start to bump up against their um, their yeah. guidelines and obviously yeah. they want to keep it clean <laughs> over there. So um, great. Well, look, I mean, I want to say congratulations, Danny, you, you know, from a standing start and by your own admission, 
naive and clueless which is probably yeah. where we all start right you know yeah. it's a big wide <laughs> world of self-publishing out there that you don't you're not born knowing about um, yeah. and you've gone to being you know usa today bestseller and i can look down your list and see the success uh, looking out at me in five figure months is fantastic that must be and in, in last time yeah. i was last time i was in south africa um because of the yeah. exchange rate money yeah. went a long way so yes yeah, so so somebody <laughs> making five figures in 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 washington dc in south africa it's yeah. you're in a nice position which is fantastic yeah no it has been that um it definitely was um a first surprising and then uh yeah it's like one of those things where you kind of you sort of struggling by struggling by trying to figure this out and then suddenly like something just hits and then you're the, the sales go up and you go, <gasps> you know, yeah. Um, but yeah. And obviously the exchange rate has been very, very welcome. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, which is helpful. Um, but yeah, it's been, it's been very good. Um, and I have to say like, and this is what I always tell authors when I do workshops is that, you know, it's, it's definitely not an overnight thing and you have to work at it. You have to produce a quality product. You can't, you know, you need to make sure that it looks good. And of course it's edited and that kind of thing. It's, you know, and it is a lot of work. So, yeah. <laughs> and is there any scope for writing in Afrikaans? In, do you, I don't know if you speak Afrikaans or what? I, I do speak it. I mean, obviously um, I learned it at school, but I'm terrible. Like I, I can't translate in my head fast enough. So even when like locally for, you know, if someone's speaking Afrikaans to me, I tend okay. to answer in English. Um, but there is a big Afrikaans romance market, but I don't, then I would have to go to a translator yes, and have yeah, them yeah. do yeah. it. So, because, um, yeah, yeah, I definitely can't write Afrikaans. That's interesting, because I imagine that if you're organized and good as you are, if you happen to have been Afrikaans, South yeah. Africa, rather than English, South Africa, and I yeah. imagine that's quite a, you could be a big fish in a smaller market there, but... Um, yeah. Yeah, because it is what it is widely spoken Afrikaans in South Africa. I mean, half is, the country yeah. speak it a lot, don't they? Yeah. 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 No, it is. Um, and I know a few Afrikaans authors. They're with uh, traditional publishers, though. But um, yeah, they. I mean, they, they they do really well. They write. They write in Afrikaans, obviously. Uh, one of the ladies is bilingual. So, um, but yeah, I would definitely have to do yeah. uh, find a translator and all of that. So <laughs> yeah, I was just wondering if you happen to have been Afrikaans. They always not yeah. ev not everyone knows this, but half of South Africa is English South African, half is Afrikaans South African. Actually, I don't even yes. know if it's fifty fifty, but um, it's not always <laughs> clear to to me when I'm speaking to people who's on who speaks what language. Yeah. But uh, yeah, apart from sometimes. Um, that Afrikaans person who refuses to speak any English to you. And uh, it happens occasionally. It happened occasionally to me while I was there. And I was a bit bewildered because oh, no. it's, um, <laughs> it is a bit like Dutch, isn't it? <laughs> it's not, yes, yeah. you can't, um, you can't yeah, guess a lot of it. My, one of my readers actually said, um, cause the one day she posted something on Facebook and I sort of managed to respond in Afrikaans. And she said, Oh, I understand that. That's like uh, they, the Dutch people always tell us we sound like they're kids when they're learning to speak Dutch. Right. So it's very yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and Dutch is a language you can't guess at. It's um, no. you need to know it. <laughs> no. Okay. Look, brilliant. Danny, it's been really lovely speaking to you. Uh, congratulations again on your success. Uh, stay in touch. We'll see how you grow. It sounds like this is your time now. You know, you've blown up in the last uh, couple of years. And um, I, see, I see only good things in your future, he sounds like <laughs> some sort of Thank mystic. Uh, so, yeah, well done. Thank you so much. This is the Self Publishing Show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Here you go, it's Danny Rene. So, uh, yes, it's, um, uh, I guess there is a bias towards America with most and Britain as well. So probably punches above its weight in terms of technology leaders. And when you're not in there, when you're even in France and Belgium, actually not speaking English, there are some hurdles that you and I don't necessarily fully appreciate or know about to think about. Yeah, that's true. And I mean, even, I mean, Aussies and Kiwis, I think have issues with print on demand and because there is no, as far as I know, anyway, there's no print cell in, in um, Australia or New Zealand. So 
Um, whereas our POD books come from, and I've been to the print cell in Milton Keynes. I think there's one in Poland, um, and obviously there's lots in the States. I don't think there's one in Australia. Might be wrong, but the, and if there if there is, it's only recent. So those kinds of things um, are, are providing issues that they have to get over that we don't have to deal with um, over here. So. Yeah, it can be it can be challenging, um, and things like advertising as well, and also ACX, and you know you can't access ACX if you're not in the UK or the US. I think it's the only two countries that you can get into ACX for. So there there are issues that that need to be surmounted, but there are clever people out there making it easy for, for people to to take advantage of those kinds of options um, that we take for granted. Yes, indeed. Well, I really enjoyed talking to Danny, and I'm very impressed with her setup. You have a look at her website and her book. She's spot on, gets everything right, um, and has a couple of social and cultural issues to deal with in South Africa. So a big section of the of, of white South Africa is quite conservative. The others are slightly more liberal in the English, and she treads a line, and she's had a few bumped up uh, against a few uh, issues there. But um, she can't always be easy, but she does a great job, and well done to her, Danny. One day when we can travel again, we'll add South Africa to a list of uh, want, to, want to go places for the Team SPF. But um, I don't know if we're ever going to get out of this island again. This could be it now. Could be, yeah. But I mean, the reason I'm recording this today is we have Miss, Mrs. D and me are going away for the, the night. It's a very nice hotel in the New Forest. So we're going to be uh, relaxing. And also, as, it's supposed to be like 27 degrees here today. It's so, amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah, September's nice. going to be 29, I think, uh, today here in Hunting. Yeah. It's already warm. Wow. Um, good. So, son on fonts. Yeah, no children. They're they're look, being looked after by the grandparents. So um, we will be um, having a relaxing time for the next couple of days. I like to see the look on Lucy's face when you sneak the golf clubs into the back of the car. <laughs> yeah, no, don't worry. I'm not doing that. I played I played twice at the weekend, but um, yeah, I'll uh, I'll be reading a lot. Actually. I've got lots to read, so I'll be lying by the pool and doing some reading. Me too. I'm reading an exciting new Craig Martell book at the moment, which I'm loving. Ah, very I, good. I, I may talk about uh, in the near future. Good. Okay. Thank you very much indeed, Mark. I want to say thank you again to Danny for joining us uh, on the show today. Uh, don't forget, you can go to patreon.com forward slash self publishing show. And as Mark said, if you want to keep your ear to the ground on stuff happening that can affect your sales and your marketing, do join our Facebook group. Uh, I think it's called SPF Secret Group, but if you just search self-publishing formula on Facebook, you will find it. There's some genre-specific groups there for you as well. Good. 101 opens on Wednesday, so we're going to be busy bunnies. Uh, Self-publishingformula.com forward slash 101. And uh, we've got some good interviews coming up, doing loads at the moment. So um, some good stuff to talk about. Still got that female tornado pilot, which I'm still very excited about. Coming your way at I'm sure Mac you are. 2. Mac <laughs> 2 any moment now. Okay, thank you very much indeed. All that remains for me to say is it's a goodbye from him. And a goodbye from me. Goodbye. Goodbye. Get show notes, the podcast archive, and free resources to boost your writing career at selfpublishingshow.com. Join our thriving Facebook group at selfpublishingshow.com forward slash Facebook. Support the show at patreon.com forward slash self-publishing show. And join us next week for more help and inspiration so that you can make your mark as a successful indie author. Publishing is changing, so get your words into the world and join the revolution with the self-publishing show.